Welcome back to the Rise and Grind Workshop. If you're new here, my name is Ryan, and I have a serious question for you. Have you been sitting inside of your workshop and just thought to yourself, man, I really wish somebody manufactured a small, portable, and very affordable laser engraver, something that I could literally just put in the back seat of my car, drive off to some parties, some craft shows, or some private events, and do custom laser engraving right there on the spot. If you've been running a laser engraver for any period of time, you know the big money is with personalization. Well, if I've piqued your interest at this point, you're gonna love this video. Take a quick look at what the amazing team over at Longer sent us. This is their Longer Nano Pro 12 watt laser engraver. And this is exactly what I just talked about. This is a portable laser engraver, but it's even more than just a portable laser engraver. The kit they sent us includes a slide extension as well as a rotary extension. So if this is something you're interested in, in this video, I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing unboxed, walk you through the setup process, and then I'm gonna show you how to use this. One of my favorite features is this smaller laser is compatible with the ever popular Lightburn software. And when I say 12 watt laser engraver, don't let the small wattage fool you. Something very unique about this laser engraver and I'm really excited to test out, this is a Galvo style laser. So you're gonna be feeding that 12 watts through a fast Galvo head. And I'll explain a little bit more about how that works a little bit later in the video when I walk you through the testing process. Let's go ahead and start getting the contents of this laser engraver unboxed and set on the table so you can see exactly what was included in this kit and you'll know exactly what to expect when yours arrives. Once you remove that top foam packaging, it's gonna give you access to all of the contents inside. Let's go ahead and start laying that out on the table. Right here is your power adapter. Next up is gonna be the little laser protective shield. Of course, you gotta have some safety glasses. Toolbox. Another accessory box, and I'll go over all the contents of this a little bit later. And again, all the cables needed to get the thing powered up and set up. Some additional plates. Now go ahead and grab this top portion of the handle. And this right here is actually the laser module itself. And this will be the plate where the actual laser module mounts to. This right here will actually be the column where that laser head module mounts. Now again, we got the package that featured the rotary attachment and slide extension. So go ahead and remove this top portion of foam and you have more accessories down inside of here. In this lower section of the box is going to be the slide extension and your rotary attachment. I'm just gonna go ahead and grab the entire foam packaging and move this over to my work table. So yes, we are now living in the digital age and I often see comments all the time that people are really bummed out they didn't get a physical manual. And if that resonates with you, you'll be happy to know that Longer did include a very nice quick start guide. This is in full color and a very thorough and detailed setup guide. Right here is gonna be the main components of the laser engraver. You have the laser head, the base, the column, and insert, and then obviously we've got the laser protective shield right here. So let's go ahead and start getting this portion assembled, and a little bit later in the video, we'll go over the rotary attachment and the slide. Now I know it might look like a lot of components laid out here on the table and in that accessory box over there. However, look at this manual. They've done a phenomenal job with the instructions, and they've also included this toolbox kit that is clearly marked with all the proper size screws, nuts, and bolts. The assembly of this Nano 12 is very simple. You're gonna have four holes in the base right here and they've machined a small pocket out. You're simply gonna take the column and mount that inside of that machine pocket and then using the correct screws which is outlined over there in that detailed manual, you're gonna mount this column to the base. <laughs> Next, you'll notice the indentation with a threaded hole, and then there's going to be a large nipple over here on this riser base. And just to make things a little bit easier, you can lay it on its side, and that way you can ensure you do not get this piece cross-threaded. Now go ahead and locate the box that has your data cables. Open this up and remove all of those cables. And Longer has really done a great job labeling the backside of this unit here, taking any guesswork or confusion out of how to run these wires. The green port you see right here is gonna control the exhaust fan. And believe it or not, this small unit has an automatic up and down, which is commonly referred to as your Z height adjustment. 
the blue cable is going to supply power to that automatic column. The yellow port is going to be for our accessories such as that rotary attachment and that slide. And last but not least, the red cable is going to be directed over to your PC. And then over here on the far side is going to be your standard power connection as well. Locate the blue connector and run that down to the bottom of the column here, and that's where you'll plug that in. Right now we do not have the shield on, so the green cable is left off. That is attached to the shield. Now go ahead and locate your accessory box. They're going to include a small wooden ruler. This is to handle all of your manual focusing. They give us a soft tape measure, and that's so you can measure the circumference or diameter of a cylinder object for the rotary attachment later in the video. This right here will be the support block for the tailstock on the rotary attachment. They've also included this really cool bubble level so you can get that rotary attachment nice and level. We've got a cable management clip that we're gonna put over here on the column, and they've also supplied you with a USB thumb drive. The base of this unit's length is eight and five eighths, and the width of the unit is gonna be about six and three eighths. And the insert plate is about four and an eighth by four and an eighth. So remember earlier in the video when I said, are you looking for something small and compact that you could just grab and throw in the back seat of your car? I think now that we have this fully assembled and I've given you some dimensions, that really shows you how small and compact this little unit is. Now that we have the power supply attached to it, let's go ahead and plug this thing in and power up the unit and make sure everything's working correctly. So in order to power this unit up, this is gonna be the main power switch. Let's go ahead and engage that. I just heard the fans kick on, and now we've got the green light illuminated. Up on the top side here, you're gonna notice a little red target looking indicator. Go ahead and press that one time, and that is gonna bring up our two little red dots, and that is how we set this in autofocus, or we can simply use the supplied ruler. This is already set to the factory focal height. And last but not least, if you are not seeing your red indicator lights, don't forget on these Galvo head lasers, they do have a lens cover on the bottom here. Make sure you remove that. Now that we have the Nano Pro fully assembled, let's go ahead and navigate over to Lightburn. This is what we use here at the Rise and Grind workshop, so we already have Lightburn installed. Now back at the Lightburn home screen, let's go ahead and navigate to the bottom right-hand side where this says Devices. You're going to click on that, and you're going to be looking for the Import button next. Let's go ahead and click Import. And then we're going to navigate back over to the uh, Software 3 folder that came on that thumb drive. And right here is the Laser Nano Lightburn parameter file we're looking for. Go ahead and click Open. If everything goes correctly, you should now see Nano Pro right here in your device list. Let's go ahead and click OK. Now you're going to want to come back over to the far right-hand side, and you're going to now see Nano Pro. Go ahead and select your Nano Pro. Now that you've selected the Nano Pro, go ahead and move up to the console tab, which you'll see right here. And this is where you're gonna verify everything connected correctly. And right now, mine is on version 1.762. That's the newest firmware version, and everything here is correct. You can see your X and your Y size is showing at 100 millimeters, and that is the size of our engraving area on this little longer Nano. So that's how simple it is to connect your longer Nano Pro to the Lightburn software. A very common issue is getting this longer Nano Pro to frame correctly, so I'm gonna give you a pro tip right now. I want you to navigate over to that console tab and look just to the right. You're gonna notice one that says macros. I want you to make sure you go all the way up to the top and over to the left here, and this says switch carving mode. Let's go ahead and make sure we select the carving mode. Now I want you to go back over here to your settings, and I want you to go over to your basic settings. You're gonna notice this little box right here that says frame continuously. I personally like to have that check marked anytime I'm working with a Galvo head laser. Number two, you're also gonna to wanna to come over here to this little box where it says 2%, and you're gonna double check to make sure that enable laser fire button is on, as well as laser on when framing, that needs to be toggled on. Let's go ahead and click OK. And now let's move back over here to our cut layers panel. You're gonna notice this button that says frame in a square. Let's go ahead and activate that and confirm that this is actually framing correctly. So for this test, we have simply placed a piece of rawhide leatherette on the engraving area. Let's go ahead and hit frame and we should see that make a nice blue outline where that would laser engrave. 
So as you can see clearly, that little blue dot is continuing to engrave the shape that that would laser. That does show us that our framing function is working correctly. I've seen some people struggle with this, so hopefully those pro tips will help you out. So if this is your first laser engraver or you kind of struggle figuring out the proper settings, let me show you how we get that dialed in. Right here inside of Lightburn, go and move up to the top where it says laser tools and you're gonna find the one that says material test. Go ahead and click on material test for this material test, we will only be checking our speed and power settings. Let's focus on the left hand side and we will start with the count. That is going to be how many squares it is going to give you a test grid on. For this test, I'm going to move that down to six. We're going to leave the parameter at speed. Our minimum speed that we want to operate is going to be probably around 3000 millimeters a second. This is leatherette. It's a very easy material to engrave and you always want to be running as fast as you can. Now, according to the Longer Nano Pro website, 5,000 millimeters is the fastest this can engrave. Over here on the height, let's change those little boxes down to three millimeters and that's good on the left hand side. Now let's move over to the right hand side here and on the column, we're going to change that count to six. We're going to leave the parameter at power. For the minimum power, we're running really fast, so I know we're going to need more than 10%. So let's just go ahead and start with 20% right there. And then for the maximum speed, we don't really want to be torching that leatherette on this test. So let's just go ahead and start out with something conservative like 40. And then as far as the width goes, again, we're going to knock that down to three. Let's go ahead and check edit our text setting. So we're good right there. We are going to be actually running this at 5,000 millimeters. And let's go ahead and crank our power up to 35 on that one there. We're gonna leave bi-directional fill on. We'll run that at 300 DPI. You can leave your overscanning at two and a half percent. And that is good for those settings right there. I went ahead and disabled the enable border. I don't need that. We wanna make sure our material setting is on fill. That looks correct there. Now I want you to come up over here to the preview bar. Well, let's go ahead and click preview. And that right there is gonna basically show you what it's doing. On the left hand side, it's gonna engrave from 3000 to 5000 on our speed. And then on the bottom, we're gonna have a power of minimum 20 and the maximum of 40. It's gonna engrave those grids and then we can visually look at that and see how close we are to finding the proper settings. Go ahead and click OK. And once again, we're gonna move back over to that frame icon and make sure that this is framing out on the material we're gonna engrave. And right there, you can see the blue outline is gonna land right on our leatherette material, knowing that we're in the correct spot. Now, when it comes to laser engraving, especially Galvo head lasers, it's crucial that the laser is in focus. Earlier in the video, I showed you this little wooden ruler. This is 150 millimeters, and that is the factory setting for the correct focal distance from your material to the bottom of the lens. So right now, we can just go ahead and take this little wooden ruler, and we wanna go from the bottom of that lens to the top of our material, and we are currently in focus at 150 millimeters. And another feature on the Nano Pro to get in focus would be to navigate to the top of the laser unit, and you're gonna press this target button right here, now, when I toggle this on and off, you're gonna notice that infrared beam disappear. You should see that red dot right down here, on, off, on, off. Now on the back side of the laser, you have an arrow pointing up and you have an arrow pointing down. Now watch, do you see how that red dot is a single dot? If I start to move this laser head up, do you see how that dot has now turned into two separate dots? This is a semi-auto focus system. This laser head automatically moves up or down when you press that button. If you don't want to use the ruler or you have a harder object to use that ruler on, let's go ahead and press the down button until both those dots converge and make one simple single dot. That is your second way to get in focus. Now let's go ahead and send the file over to the Nano Pro and see how it does. <music> So there you have it. That's how you run a material test grid. Let's move this over to the workbench, clean it up and look at the results. So again, the point of a material test card is to give you a grid with a minimum power and a maximum power. And that way you can visually look at that grid and pick and select what look you like. There's no right or wrong way to laser engrave leatherette. 
Obviously, if you're burning into the foam material, that's too much. But at the end of the day, it's personally up to you and the look you want. When it comes to laser engraving, you want to be able to laser engrave as fast as you can because time is money. So according to me, looking at this grid, I'm going to be using 5,000 speed and anywhere from 24 to around 30% power, depending on the color of leatherette and the look I'm going for. But that made a phenomenal test grid pattern. Very impressed with the power output of this little longer Nano Pro. We now went ahead and loaded a piece of three millimeter MDF onto the longer Nano. Once again, you can run a material test card on any material you plan to laser engrave in the shop. We do a lot of Baltic Birch, MDF, and leatherette. So let's go ahead and pay attention to those red indicator lights and let's go ahead and get this in focus. We want both those dots to converge into one. And for this material test, we're leaving our settings exactly the same. So let's go ahead and do a quick sanity check and frame it. And as you can see, that blue outline is gonna land on our material. Let's go ahead and click OK. And once again, let's send this over to the laser and see how it does. So once again, simply take your material off of the laser, get it under some good light, and take a look at your grid. Even at 5,000 speed with the minimum power, it still marked that MDF pretty good. So once again, guys, there's no right or wrong way to do this. You are simply gonna look at that test grid and determine how dark of a marking you would like on your material. Pick that speed and pick that power. That right there is how you find all the correct settings for every single piece of material you're gonna laser engrave in your workshop. So now that I ran a material test card on some MDF, I wanna test out a design on some three millimeter Baltic birch. So according to that material test card, I'm gonna run the maximum speed of 5,000 millimeters a second. I've put my power to 40%. I do have bi-directional fill on. I have overscanning at two and a half percent and my LPI is gonna be 300 for this project. We now have a scrap piece of Baltic Birch loaded up on the Nano Pro. Let's go ahead and frame this out to make sure it lands where we want it to. That's perfect. Let's go ahead and send this over to the laser engraver and see how it does. Again, three millimeter Baltic Birch. We ran this at five millimeters a second at 40% power with 300 LPI. And you can see how good that engraved. This is a fantastic little laser. And just for reference, so you can really inspect that detail, this is only about an inch and a quarter at its widest point and one inch tall. And that's still laser engraved, incredible detail. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I've been extremely impressed with the longer Nano Pro. Now that we've had this assembled and ran it through some basic tests, this thing may be small and affordable, but as you can see, it delivered in a big way. Again, I really think this thing is gonna shine for somebody that is limited on space, Maybe you've had your eye on a fiber Galvo laser, but you felt really intimidated. This would be a very good gradual step where you can learn to work with a Galvo style lens. As you can see, that was very simple to run those material test cards. I was really impressed with the speed and the power output this little diode laser was able to achieve utilizing that Galvo head. And the crazy part, we're only touching the tip of the iceberg. Earlier in the video, I showed you that our kit came with this slide extension table as well as a rotary attachment. My entire goal with this video was to get this thing unboxed, show you how to assemble it, get it connected to the software, and then help you dial in those settings if you've never used a Galvo laser. If you've made it this far into the video, you should be feeling pretty confident that you could pick up one of these Nano Pros, get it all set up, assembled, and find those perfect laser engraving settings. And as much as I would love to keep going, this video has ran on pretty long. So in our next video series, we're gonna cover how to work with this slide extension table. And we're also gonna show you how to use this rotary attachment so you can do cylindrical objects like this tumbler right here. Another thing I need to mention, this is considered a portable laser engraver. And I'm gonna show you how you can actually detach the laser source and actually do some vertical laser engraving on something like a wall. Now, just because you only saw me run material test cards on leatherette and some wood, that does not mean those are the only materials that this laser is very good at engraving. 
In the next video, I'm also gonna cover some stuff like aluminum and some slate coasters as well. So once again, I do wanna thank the amazing team over there at Longer for sending us this Nano Pro, and they've been gracious enough to give us a discount code. This is already a very affordable unit, but if you guys would like to save an additional 5% and you guys gained some value out of this video, I would appreciate it if you use my discount code, Rise and Grind. I'll have that right here down on the screen and in the description below. And I'm also gonna request that you guys drop some comments below. Let me know what other questions you might have about this setup for future videos. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll catch you on the next one.